So uh, I spend a fair amount of my time while I'm at the University of Colorado in the classroom. Um, I'm a fairly senior member of the physics department and I get to, not exactly first dibs, but I get a lot of choice in which classes I teach. I prefer to teach freshman classes. I've taught over the last four years, I think I added up about 1,300 freshmen have come through my classroom. And people say, why do you like to teach freshmen? And it's because they're so adorable, I could just pinch their chubby little cheeks. <laughs> no, seriously, it is really fun to, that the, the young energy, it's just fun for me to bounce off of an old, old grumpy guy like myself. I, they're, they're really the, the most fun to teach, I think. But actually, I'm here to talk more about what I do in my lab. And one of the things I want to emphasize is that when I'm not in the classroom, I go into my lab, the teaching doesn't, doesn't start. It's in fact where I do some of my most in, intense teaching. So what do we make in my lab? Uh, we make the world's coldest stuff. Um, and what do I mean by cold in the world of physics? Really, I have two different answers, but my first answer is we make the world's coldest stuff. And by, in the world of physics, we like to measure up from zero. So 71 Fahrenheit, call that room temperature, we'd say that's 295 degrees Kelvin. That means 295 degrees above the lowest possible temperature. Uh, minus 128 Fahrenheit sounds impossibly cold, but that's still 184 degrees above absolute zero in Kelvin. We get down very cold. When I was in high school, they told me liquid helium was in cold. In college, I learned that the space between um, the stars, interstellar space is three Kelvin, those are four Kelvin. That's not even getting close to how cold we are. We keep going much colder than that. Two millikelvin, two thousandths of a degree above absolute zero is the coldest you can get using old school refrigerators. Way, we're way colder than that. We keep going down, 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 down. In early 1995, we were at 200 nanokelvin, that's 200 billionths of a degree above absolute zero. A little later in 1995, we got to 20 nanokelvin, which in those days was by far the coldest thing that had ever been seen. Things get weird at those low temperatures, very weird. And one of the things we saw was this thing called Bose-Einstein condensation. Wish I had time to tell you about it. The gas of very cold atoms becomes coherent, superfluid, it interacts with light in a very weird way. In the intervening 20 years, groups all around the world have started to study this. A lot of cool physics has come out of it. There, I did it again. Um, and I can, I'd like to tell you that I did this, but that would be a lie. The people who actually did it is this group here. They were in my lab in 1995. And six years later, we had a group reunion in the Grand Hotel in Stockholm on our way to the Nobel Prize ceremony. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I have another answer to what we make. Yes, we make the world's coldest stuff, but we also make or we train highly trained young technology people. Um, here's just a picture of some of them over the years. There is nothing like cutting your teeth on a truly hard problem to train you to become a really good scientist, a really good technologist. You know, two or three years after people have started working for me, they might come to me and said, I'm solving this problem, but I don't know how to do it. I never took a class in this. Uh, I never studied this. And I said, no one ever studied this. No one ever knows anything about it. Suck it up. This is your problem. My goal is, is after four or five years working in my lab, they get their PhD and they are, I even tell them this explicitly, I want you to be all around free swinging technological badasses. I don't want you to not feel like I see a problem, I can solve it. And then, you know, sometimes you're disappointed. But basically, show me the manual. If there's no manual, I'll write one. I, I'm on top of it. That's sort of the notion. And, and the way you get that kind of confidence is by having encountered stuff that no one's ever done before and doing it. So that's kind of what we're about. Um, how do we get things that cold? Um, well, they told me I didn't have that much time, but since I'm out already on the stage, it's only going to take about 40 minutes. And <laughs> okay, Phil DeStefano has given me the universal symbol for I will murder you, so we're going to skip over that. We use magnets and lasers. I'm sorry if that's unsatisfactory. Ask me at the reception. We get very, very cold. Why do we get so cold? Well, one of the reasons, it sounds kind of prosaic, but it has to do with HVAC systems, if you want. Um, the cool new idea in, quantum, in computing is this idea called quantum computing. And uh, there's no commercial device for that yet, but almost all of the, new, of the technological ideas for generating one require extraordinarily low temperatures. Many of them involve using the kind of low temperature techniques we developed at Boulder for getting to these very low temperatures. The other answer I've already alluded to, which is the fact that it's so very hard is one of the reasons we do it. If you want to become a really good mountain climber, you use 
as a whetstone to carve the edge of your mountain climbing skills, a very, very large and difficult mountain, if you want to become a good all-around technology person, you try to solve hard problems. The result is people leaving uh, CU physics department and going off starting companies, Sears Vescent, Precision Photonics, companies around, or becoming CTOs, technological leaders in companies, in startups, yes, but also in established companies. Honeywell uh, recently opened a branch facility in Broomfield. I looked at their, um, their website for hiring, and they basically have hired, you know, basically they're hiring people out of our physics and engineering schools as fast as we can graduate them. Um, so what, do I, what, what are we doing? What are we about at the, in the physics department? What are we about at the University of Colorado? We're about uh, shaping tomorrow's leaders. Here are a bunch of people uh, in my lab doing just exactly what I've been talking about. We're about positively impacting humanity. It's, um, I'm sorry to say that uh, high tech in general and physics in particular over the years has not really been fully representative of the grand diversity of our wonderful country. It's something that we feel keenly. I feel that the physics department at the University of Colorado is making progress in this, in particular in training a new generation of physicists to train the next generation of physicists. And over the last decade or so, at least 20 women, underrepresented minorities, have left Boulder and gone on to become young faculty around the country, uh, themselves being both excellent role models and also training a new generation. And uh, I, I'm, I'm just, I must say I'm tremendously proud of that record. And uh, these are all people I know well from their time in Boulder. Uh, we are one of the top universities for innovation. You might object that the science I've told you so about, about so far happened back in 1995, which was, face it, was a while ago. We've been doing some really interesting things in the meantime, and I'd love to tell you about it, but this is kind of a large group and it might get out. Um, I'll be at the question and answer session a little afterwards. Well, in a, in a smaller group, I'll, I'll share a few secrets and I, I won't have to actually kill you. Uh, I thank you very much for your attention.